setting, a darkness falling, the night was coming through. Justice blinded, freedom dying, our fears were coming true. Wind was raging, ocean crashing, sound of drums were no more. People crying, a nation dying, the eagle failing to soar. What a catchy tune that is. <laughs> wow. Uh, as some of you know, I wrote that song 13 years ago this year. It's over 12 years old. And wow, was it ever a powerful song used in ministry this past year. And I'm thankful to the Lord for that. I feel it was, um, uh, yeah, it was a gift of the Lord, that song, Forgiven and Free. Written in the year 2010 for the journey of freedom. Hey, everyone, and good afternoon and happy new year. Happy 20, glorious, happy, glorious 2023. Um, I'm Art Lucier, and this is Eagle Eye Prophetic Perspectives with Art Lucier and friends. And sometimes I have friends here, and sometimes I don't. Today, though, I just didn't feel that there was time. I needed to blow through a word that the Lord had given me as I waited well in the Lord during the month of December. And I finished writing it uh, December 22 of 2022. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Yuha, Colleen, Verna. Yeah, Happy New Year to you guys as well. As you guys know, um, I was considering 
not doing eagle eye anymore and maybe just hi linda um freedom 2023 that's right declare it with me i will be free in 2023 hey ty god bless you man of god women of god who have joined us here today um i um had one heck of a year last year in some ways we had the most incredible years of ministry i feel um i watched convergence of words words come to pass um acceleration double portion anointing etc like i'd never seen happen in any year in the past previously and i don't believe it's supposed to cap there or over um on the contrary, I think that 2022 is supposed to build into and prepare us for this year, which is yet moving even more in the double portion, the key of David, 220 power, etc. cetera. Um, as also you guys know, I use Eagle Eye, or I did, to encourage you, the intercessors of the Canadian Firewall and different people who pray uh, by yourselves on, on some of the things that I see as whatever you consider me to be, whether that's a, a prophetic voice, a builder, pastor, a uh, man of God, um, worship leader, whatever. I do, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I like to tell you all uh, what I'm seeing. And very often I also, I just kind of like our ministry just to go out and live what we're seeing. It's like, I see that, this is happening. Let's go do that. So I don't very often write a prophetic word down in its entirety, uh, like for a year. But I'm just letting you know, I did. I felt impressed of the Lord. Uh, do you know, I should write a word down for 2023. Now, in full disclosure, I was um, very, very emptied last year. I gave of myself fully. To the kingdom of God, I feel as most best as I could. Um, uh, hello, everyone watching. Twenty-three people. That's what when when Marlene said that. Twenty-three people. Twenty twenty-three. Twenty twenty-three is a powerful year, but it's going to be a, a sharp year, an incredible dividing year coming upon us. So this, so this word that I compiled, finished compiling. On the 12th month of the 22nd day of the 12th month in the year 2022, I want to break it down a little bit for you. Some of you have seen it. I, 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 I squeezed it into 22 minutes. I'm going to break it down a little bit more. I was tired. Um, I needed a rest. This is not wrong. This is the way that God has made us, I believe. What do I mean by that? Let's say you're a farmer out there in Canada. Are there any farmers at all? Farmers, ranchers watching here right now? You have homesteads? You'll know that work, uh, you know, Saturdays and Sundays and holidays, when you have a farm, well, you guys don't take a break. You guys work right through. And and we wake up, we work hard, and um, and then we're tired. And that's the way God made it. God made us to work. Uh, the Bible says if we don't work, we shouldn't eat. Now, um, we need rest, and God made it that way as well. And you know what? I, I spent the first uh, 11 months of last year working my butt off. I did 60,000 kilometers on my truck last year, not including the kilometers on our bus. And, and we did our best as a small a uh, small ministry based out of, you know, um, Kelowna, British Columbia here. We did our best to just blow the trumpet and see revival reformation come to the next level in the nation. For those who are part of that, thank you. For those who've supported this ministry, thank you. For those who you do an hour on the firewall, thank you. For those who, um, uh, you, you know, um, support the firewall, thank you. For those who love us, thank you. Um, hey, everyone, those who have just recently joined us, I'm going to blow through my prophetic word that the Lord gave me 
Um, so here we go. Um, by the way, share this out if you're on Facebook. Um, and um, uh, I, I want to, my opinion, my view, some things that the Lord has shown me. Okay. So let's go. May the Lord lead and may the Holy Spirit speak to us as we talk about the coming year. And may God get the glory for the coming year, and may God use us mightily in this coming year. Oh, and by the way, I had a really good break at Christmas time. I took a few weeks off of of uh, uh, from everything, and I recouped, and I slept, and I napped, and I visited, and it was just glorious. And now I'm on six six day of fasting, um, and it's glorious. I uh, mean, no fifth day. I didn't start till January 2nd. I started sometime the evening of January 1st. I always do. That's just me. And uh, for those who are a day ahead of me, good for you. I feel sharp, clear. Um, I'm so in love with the Lord. I'm so in love with my wife and my family. I'm so in love with Canada, our nation. And I'm so in love with the, the God's people. And I just want you to feel that and know that. And whatever should happen this year. I just pray that God gets the glory that you know that you're loved by the Lord. You are loved of God. We are loved of God. And you're not alone. For those who love the Lord, what it says is all things will work together for good. For those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. So, with that, here we go. As some of you know, 2023, the Hebrew year is the year 5783, which we already entered, 83. Interesting, I'm going to focus just a second on, on the year, on the decade, 80, which started in the year 2020. Okay, so... A decade. Uh, the decade in Hebrew is called is 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 called pay. Uh, this is the root word for Pesach or Passover. Interestingly, uh, on the year 2020, we saw for the first time since the original Passover was instituted 3,500 years ago, we saw Israel quarantined to their houses once again. Um, in the year 2020 because of COVID to let the death angel pass over, you know, uh, as they did 3,500 years ago. Here, here, here's my, here's what I see people. Passover was the last judgment in a series of 10 judgments um, to bring people, God's, God's people out of bondage, out of Egypt. And what God said to Moses was, let my people go. This is what I want you to say. Moses, say this to Pharaoh. Tell, say, Pharaoh, let my people go, that they may worship me out in the desert. So uh, that was Passover uh, 3,500 years ago was the last plague of 10, where a death angel came and struck down the firstborn of every household. Um, unless you had the blood on the doorposts. They took lamb's blood, sheep, they put it on the 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 the, the, the lintels of and and uh, the doorposts and the, the 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 lintel, like the three sides of the door. And when a death angel showed up, he said, No, they're trusting in God, I'm gonna pass over them. And so we celebrate Passover. This Passover of 2020 that we saw, and by the way, God says, stay in your houses. Do not come out. Let the death angel pass over. 3,500 years ago, at the beginning of Passover decade, the Israelites were once again quarantined to their house. I personally see and I feel. I, I see a decade as 10 judgments to get the people out of bondage. There's 10 years of judgments coming but it started this time in reverse. We did the Passover first. So I um, I believe we're entered into this decade 
of judgments on the institutions of men. Um, I believe it says here, I wrote, a decade of judgments and corrections, 10 judgments, 10 years, as God exposes and judges the institutions of men. That's including man-made religious institutions, where we're going to see the, the grace lift off of that. And pastors, if you are were in there and yesterday's wineskin, God's going to give us a grace to transfer over if you would allow it. Because God will not pour new wine into old wineskins. Okay, let me go on. Um, also judgments against the pharaohs who oppose God's people. The letter pay, which equals the number 80. Rabbis say it it is the mouth of Pharaoh with his tooth getting knocked out. The pharaohs that uh, oppose God's people getting the 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 tooth knocked out. Um, yes, Jason Upton song. Hey, Pharaoh, let my people go. There's also a new one by Brandon Lake, incredible, which I'm just learning now. Anyway, so that's I believe we've entered a decade. For those who believe the the rapture is just right here. Okay, I I that would be awesome. Um, um. I, I'm I'm personally against a rapture ideology that brings escapism theology, which says it doesn't matter what's bad going to happen. Let's just be ready to go. No, you need to be ready, I believe, for tribulation that we've seen previously in the world and that we're entering now. And I don't believe my personal opinion from what I see in scripture that we're being taken anytime soon. Oh, that would be awesome if we were. I know there's a lot of um, uh, opinions out there of different men of God who believe in pre-rich, pre-trip, um, and some who believe there is no rapture. I personally do see a rapture in the Word of God clearly, but I believe we're around here for some tribulation. But before the wrath of God is really poured out, which we could see in a, in in about ten years, um, but hey, this is just. Uh, a pro the prophets see through a dark glass dimly, as it says in the New Testament. Agreed, not leaving the world to quit yet. Come on, Derek. Um, God bless you, Derek Schneider, Apostle of Canada, as you teach and admonish the kingdom where you do. So good. Um, we need to prepare the people rather than just giving them milk. We need to prepare them to stand. Um, let's go on. All right. Something, though, when Passover hits or the judgments of God hit, um, um, when, when, the, when, when judgments hit pharaohs or the institutions of men, of Moses are, are raised up. Moses is talking about saying, hey, let my people go. And they start to speak about the judgments. Now, what happens is... Um, is uh, um, Pharaoh tries to turn God's people against the Moseses. What happened was uh, Moses, uh, Pharaoh said, oh, okay, judgment say, well, then I'm going to make my people, make God's people make bricks without straw, no filler. It's going to be harder for them. And the people blamed Moses because Pharaoh tries to turn God's people against the leaders, against the Moseses. Be aware of that. That will be at your doorstep. Uh, don't do not follow it. God is trying to take us out of our multifaceted bondage. And it will not be overnight. The enemy will be raging and he will be looking to divide and conquer. Moses' delivers are coming. More faith on Christ's return than on the power of the kingdom to now to transfer. Come on. That's right. Okay, so Isaiah 22, 22, um, as you know, at the beginning of the decade of pay, on February 2nd of 2022, the second month, second day, 2022, Bob Jones's word comes to pass saying that when you see the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl for the second time, understand this, that the Apostolic Chiefs will be coming forward. And the greatest shift of the ecclesia that we've known is will be upon us. That was three years ago, this coming February 2nd, at the beginning of Pesach, so the beginning of the decade of pay of the 5780s. 
Um, the greatest shift is now upon us. And this has to do with the key of David. This is, I don't have time to go into it. If you listened to my former Eagle Eye broadcast uh, from a year ago, um, uh, Bob Jones's death, the riddle of his death and timing of his death is tied to um, the key of David. By the way, he was uh, buried on 222 um, uh, in the last decade. So was... uh, John Paul Jackson, Paul Kane, the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, the Kansas City Prophets. By the way, speaking of Kansas City Chiefs, they did win their Super Bowl the second time on February 2nd, 2022, and it was the coach's 222nd win. Yep, you cannot make this stuff up. God is speaking loud for those who have ears to hear. The key of David out of Isaiah 22, 22. God says, I will place upon his shoulder the key of David. What he opens, no one will shut. What he shuts, no one will open. This is kingdom authority. This is the kingdom of God now, not just churchianity, a kingdom shift, ecclesia authority for those who will worship the Lord, spend time with the Lord, have intimacy with the Lord, get revelation from the Lord, partner in prayer and fasting to see the angels move uh, on our behalf. This is uh, for us now. We're coming into the maturity of the 2022 year into 2023. 2022 bridges the key of David year with the 2024, which is the 24 elders laying their crowns down at the feet of him who the father. By the way, some people say, I don't want a crown. I just want to worship. Listen, you can't throw a crown down without getting a crown. You can't move in authority unless you have a crown. And this is coming into 2024, the 24 elders throwing their crowns down. Um, I I don't have time to go into that more. Um, Okay. A year of worship in corporate gatherings will create worship portals for for his presence and for the angelic host. This is part of the key of David. Many who are not well and who've been poisoned by medical procedures by, do I say the word? Medical procedures that many were forced to get, otherwise they'd lose their jobs. I'll say it like that. Will be healed. Many who've been poisoned by uh, by, by just simply believing government and um, health officials who've been poisoned uh, will be delivered in these meetings. We've been seeing it already. We've heard of three in our ministry. Recently, uh, someone in our ministry, in our church, who's been tricked and lied to, into even getting a third medical procedure. Um, I spoke over them, prayed over them about deliverance the next day, threw up, sick, felt better than ever. Um, And this is how many people are going to be delivered by actually throwing it up and out of their body. God wants to deliver those who've been tricked into taking a poisonous procedure and especially in our worship gatherings. Okay, so let me go on. Truth tellers, like John the Baptist. You see, when there's a new Jesus movement that happens, John the Baptist are sent ahead to prepare the way of the Lord. They will be compelled, and they will challenge the status quo, especially religious institutions. We need to pray for them. They need our covering and our prayers like never before. Um, and... Uh, so let me break this down. The, the training of the Josephs. Joseph, um, out of Genesis 41, rejected by his brothers, um, and uh, a, a, a prophetic dreamer, had to go th- through rejection from his brothers, falsely accused, had to spend time um, in the enemy's household serving him in jail, falsely accused, but then at the right time, um, uh, Proverbs, uh, uh, Genesis 41, 14. That's my phone number. And I've been waiting for these times to come. And now they're here. Joseph's being sent ahead to, uh, to bring provisions for God's people and to deliver them in times of famine. Joseph is the one who really built and established Goshen. And um, so Joseph's are upon us. He partners with the camels of the Lord to bring provision. I'm just saying many of you are Joseph's and being trained 
Timing of training is basically over. Some of you are still being fast-tracked. And speaking of Goshen's, God is establishing Goshen's. And these are what, this is what, um, this is what the prophets have been saying. Goshen's, watch for Goshen's. Um, so, um, spiritual and physical Goshen's are being built. Um, and uh, is he, uh, Derek, isn't it interesting? 4114, 4141. Uh, 4414, like uh, 4144. These are numbers. If you look, the numbers of this is Joseph's number, you know. And uh, when I got a revelation of this, was when I looked down in my vehicle and I had 4144 kilometers on my van, my very first new vehicle I ever bought in the year 02. And then I looked down again a week later, 4414. And the Lord says, Yeah, this is this is so. I looked in Isaiah, should be in there. No. It was in Genesis, and it was the number of Josephs. And then I brought it to my buddy. I said, look, 41, 41, 41, 41, uh, 44, 40, 14. Look at the number of Joseph. And my buddy says, your number is 41, 14. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's my phone number. The next day on Elijah list, uh, the next, uh, your number is 40, 441. This is the season of Joseph's arising, be, having the wisdom of God on how to even partner with government and partner with the Lord on how to bring deliverance to God's people. I'm telling you, this is the time. Um, the next day on the Elijah list, um, there was a word put out from a prophet. This was like 21 years ago. And it was a man who had a dream about a, 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 a football game between angels and demons. And they were playing a football game. And then they looked like they were going to lose. And the score was 41 to 41. And then 41, 42, if you read Genesis 41, 42. The angels got over and they, 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 <coughs> they scored a touchdown. At the very same, uh, very same year, I had a dream about playing a football game going up a mountain. And it was green with white lines. AstroTurf playing up a mountain, and I was carrying a ball. And across, if I got across, I saw the word revival. I'm going to stop there because I need to go on. The idea of Goshen's is oil, both in the natural and spiritual, um, provision and protection for God's people. This is on the Father's heart for his children. This is why Goshen's, both spiritual and, and physical, are being built. And as you know, um, I'm almost completed two years of building a physical Goshen of 101 acres. All right. Uh, I have to touch. I have to go on. Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is a scripture verse and a psalm for this year. I encourage you to memorize it, quote it, declare. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He will. I'm actually preaching on this tomorrow night in our church about 7 o'clock Pacific Standard Time going live. I'm preaching on the Psalm 23 for this year. Many of you will live it. Many of you will face death. You will be in the valley of the shadow of death. God's not going to bring you around it, but through it, and he's going to feed you even in the presence of your enemies. He will prepare a table before you. This is a big deal. This is a year of overcoming addictions, becoming free, the shadow of death having even the, it's a shadow. It's a it's a gone. It's a memory. It's the darkness, but it doesn't matter. Even though you're in the, the shadow of it, you're we God is setting us free from eating addictions, pornography addictions, uh, drug addictions, uh, alcohol addictions, to even tobacco addictions. I declare freedom for God's people. Going into year 2023, from uh, the spirit of death, we have to face it. We have to overcome it. The number 23, the word kill is in the number, is in the Bible 23 times um, in the New Testament. And also baptisms is in uh, number 23, 23 times. I believe that's King James. Uh, dead works are a shadow. Ooh, dead works are a shadow as well. Dead wood is like dead wood is like that's the dead works of men that's right 
Oh, wow. Yes, that's very good. Okay. Um, baptisms, new life, overcoming, new creation. All right. Okay. So let's go on, though. That's Psalm 23. I feel, uh, I heard the Lord very distinctly, I'm going to shake the political spirit out of my church. That political spirit of posturing, the political spirit which gives room for uh, both, a which are created very large, often by Ahabs, which give room for Jezebel. Um, compromise, seeker-friendly, is never the answer and has never been the uh, 2020 free. <laughs> 2020 free. <laughs> I love that. 2023, 2020 free. That's sweet. Yeah, so... Um, uh, so this year becoming free and not giving room anymore to that spirit of death and to that political spirit, he's shaking it. You watch what happens. I, I, all 20, he's going to confront Jezebel and the, and, uh, that political spirit and even the political spirit where we've been scared to tell the truth or bring prophetic words. Well, I'm involved in politics, so I can't speak the truth. Now, God is uh, calling us on it. It's compromise, and it's not the answer. What is the answer is an outpouring of God's spirit partnered with and followed by true reformation. It's a year of reformation. Again, things are going to be reformed. Listen, when you have John the Baptist around, Can you imagine who John the Baptist was? His dad was a high priest for the lineage, you know, of Aaron, like the Levitical priesthood. And John the Baptist was supposed to follow in his dad's steps and bring, you know, honor to the name. But John the Baptist was rogue living in the desert with a bunch of vagabonds who fasted all the time and Eating, uh, uh, food that's not allowed, but then when the move of God happens <laughs> and the his dad's friends, the Pharisees, start to come out, the uh, you know, that whole religious order, uh, John starts to call out his dad's friends, you brood of vipers. Oh, it's it's uh. It's rough. <laughs> That's rough, the, the call of John the Baptist. You don't want him at your family camps. Nonetheless, pray for the John the Baptist and the truth tellers to come forward. Um, re, and, 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 and by the way, and because, and to think of John the Baptist, John the Baptist was out of an old order prophesying about the kingdom of God. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is here. God had set up Levitical priesthood and the priests who um and and the on the you know on the Pharisees all God set this up and and then but then there's a shift. And you know what? God has used his church in the last 150 years in Canada, some for good, you know, and as where where he could. But now there's a shift. And and it's a messy time going from churchianity to the ecclesia and the kingdom. And and but 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 hey so so hang on, but I'm going to tell you those who reject the new wine skin that's being built, keep your eyes open. You reject the wine. God cannot pour new wine into the old wine skin. It cannot hold it. It will not hold it. It'll bust it apart. God loves the old wine skin because at one time it was new wine, a uh, new wine skin, and He won't pour out His wine into it. He'll just build a new wine skin, and they can continue on with their ways and being scared of the Holy Ghost or their political ways or uh, their, um, you know, uh, divided ways or their, you know, um, well, we have to worship God, you know, we have to earn our salvation by, have, you know, worshiping the Lord on the Sabbath or, or, or. Um, yeah, no, uh, there's new wine. That's right, Lisa, there is new wine. Have a glass of fresh wine. Cheers. Fasting right now, and I'm going to tell you, <laughs> um, it's going to be an extended fast of, of sorts. This is an imperative year to get from 2022 to 2024. 
Uh, it's a year of intercession, fasting. It's a year of for the firewall to take their place. Some of you may have heard the dream of Kirk Smith, where I went up to him. I said, dude, I had 23 dreams. Number 23. Um, and 23 years ago was when things ignited me, really. I don't have time to go into that. But then in his dream, 23 geeks got up behind him and flew over us and went for the birch tree. Bob Birch is the one who laid hands on uh, David Damien, who started the Watchmen, which was an intercessory lead, lead, leading of repentance for 25 years. Well, it went for 15, and then I people say, Art, you took that, you took that, whether it's the mantle or um, you took what the Watchmen was doing, and you did it with the Battle for Canada. Okay. In any case, Bob Birch is the one who started it. Back in the 80s, 90s, he would pray all night. The birch tree, these 23 geese, the honkers, the intercessors who make way for the eagles, went to the birch tree. Wow, oh, wow. Okay, so, well, let me go on. Ah, you know, and, and remember, Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, God told him this, there's two main sins for Israel, forsaking him which is the spring of living water and the Holy Ghost and digging your own cisterns. We have dug our own cisterns where we've controlled things and we didn't allow the Holy Ghost to move. It's over. It's drying up. <clears throat> so that's now, that's, that's a bit of what I see. The rest of it, I just want to live out. And... Um, so uh, I'm going to go a little bit more now onto the provinces and the regions. Uh, let me talk to you a little bit about it. For the be, while spending time with the Lord, all of a sudden I started getting download for provinces and for regions. Um, yeah, and as Derek said, this is a messy time, but the chaos pr chaos precedes divine order. Bring it, Lord. Wow, the very first time. That the Holy Ghost is mentioned in all of Scripture is the second verse of Scripture. Genesis 1 2. It says the Holy Ghost hovered above the waters. It talked about chaos. There was chaos then. And then God spoke, Let there be light. And God brought order. And there is some chaos right now, and He's bringing kingdom order. Uh, it's incredible. Decisions made this year will have consequences in 2024. Absolutely. You must face death. You must face that which holds you back. You must face and not just hide behind religious rituals anymore. Isn't it awesome that we get to celebrate like Jewish feasts or we get to celebrate, you know, a Friday night, uh, you know, meals or a Seder meal. We get to celebrate, um, uh, these Jewish days, but it's it's like a lot of people, though, they don't face their own demons, their own addictions, their own uh, uh, shadows of death. Rather, they just settle for a religious do's and don'ts and light a candle, or they go and they celebrate a Passover meal, or they, they go and for the 30th time, they go to Israel and look at the empty tomb again, but they never have breakthrough. Of the kingdom. This you're going to be faced with a decision to break through and trust the Lord. Is he your shepherd or not? Well, so with that, <clears throat> let me talk to the regions of what I saw. And again, this is um, uh, just what I see. All right. And what I'm hearing. For the nation of Canada at this time, I've never had words for specific provinces or regions before. So let me start with British Columbia. Let me go from the west to the east first. British Columbia. This is what I heard. Dark agendas, many dark agendas have come through you that have hurt the children. Zechariah chapter 9 for you. 
British Columbia. Return to the strongholds. Gather and pray for your light to come, to come. The Lord wants to give you a double portion of his enabling grace and power to understand and to overcome the agendas of darkness. British Columbia, the stronghold of prayer and fasting, you must. Alberta. <clears throat> now, I'm going to start off with a word about the forgotten, rejected son. I got this word four years ago, right after Battle for Canada, North Battleford. I got this word. And this word was, Alberta, you are the forgotten and rejected son that will lead to the undoing of an unrighteous government. I don't know what that means before it. Just take it at face value. And the Lord would say, I must have a way of getting my oil to the world. Now, as you know, Alberta has a third largest reserve, oil reserve in the world. But the oil is more than just physical oil. It's spiritual. And... Um, you know, the oil, the anointing oil, the move of the Holy Ghost. Men reject it. Religiousness rejects it. But also the oil, which brings prosperity, which is being landlocked and fought. The Lord says, pray for it to get, get out and get through. Both in the natural and in the spiritual. You must continue to pray for breakthrough for my oil. And this is what I heard. Daniel Smith is a Cyrus at this time. Now, that's what I heard. You might not like everything about her. I'm sure I don't. All I know is that the very first time I heard her name two or three months ago, I'm like, that name, Daniel Smith, what is this? Pray for her. This is what I heard. Pray for her. Stand with her. She is a hammer in my hand at this time, says the Lord. I'm not saying, you know, Cyrus was an unsaved man fully was used to bring back the exiles and rebuild the temple. Um, wow. In the time of Daniel. All right. Saskatchewan. Healing really is the children's bread. Out of you, a healing revival will and is coming forward once again. I call you the Goshen of the nation, Saskatchewan. The glory of the Lord will be as a light, and it will never go out. I'll take the word for Alberta and Saskatchewan, Canada's border. Yes, you are, Lisa. You are <laughs> Lloyd Minister, half in Saskatchewan, half in Alberta. Interesting. So amazing. Um <laughs> All right, Manitoba. The head is sick. Manitoba, this is where this is what I heard. The head is sick and the heart is faint. The head being like Ottawa or uh, the, the 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 leaders of the nation, it, it's sick. Our government is sick. And the heart, which is Manitoba, the heartland, the heart is faint. Continue, Manitoba, to ask me for your healing. Ask me for your healing. Continue to ask for he the healing bomb to come to you. Stand against the darkness. Make a stand. Stand in your authority. As the heart is made well, the whole body is restored. Wow. Ta-ta. Now, my next word for Ottawa. Not for Ontario. I do not have a word for Ontario. I didn't get one. I'm not making one up. But this is what I did get, and it was for Ottawa, which is in Ontario, but it's the capital city. Um, you know, it's an it's a nation's capital. So, do you want to take this for Ontario? I didn't, like I said, I didn't get an Ontario word per se, but I got one for for Ottawa. I'm going to tell you what I see. I've seen, and I see. A dragon wrapped around your tower, the Peace Tower. I've seen this over for the last year. 
I literally see a large red dragon wrapped around the Peace Tower holding on tight. That's what I see. The one that establishes fear and chaos holds you tight. He is the twisting serpent of old. He must be defeated. Now, as I go on for this word, this is national. This is all of us nationally. I don't care what province or region, territory you're from. This is our nation's capital. This is what's holding tight. Um, and uh, this is simply what I see. Okay. He must be defeated. He feeds off the innocent bloodshed. The, the, the shed blood of the innocent is what empowers the dragon, empowers a lot of our government. He holds captive, the dragon does, those he chooses to use in power, not God's people, but, and, and, and you know, per se, those in power, those who lead. And this is what we're facing in the nation of Canada. The dragon empowered by um, breaking covenant uh, with God. That's Baal. And the dragon of old um, wrapping around by empowered by the, the bloodshed abortion. Uh, the, the bloodshed of the innocent. But I have good news, says the Lord. By willing to lay down your life for the Lord, you overcome the dragon. And this is what 2023 is about. Facing the spirit of death, not being afraid of death, dying to self, and um, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. All right. Revelation 12, 11. They, over, they triumphed over him who is at the enemy, Satan, the dragon, by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. They will overcome him, the dragon, to see that Canada remains a sheep nation. This is a big deal. I am not pulling punches here. This is what I see. This is and just what the Lord has allowed me to tell you all here today. Um, and apparently other people have seen the same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Quebec. I declare over you, Quebec, the foundation will be restored. The original intent for the for Quebec will be restored. The fire of God shall be restored. Reformation is at your door, Quebec. Whoa, everyone good there, you guys? Just a heads up. You might see some live video coming from Quebec City very soon. I'm just giving you a heads up very soon. Wow. Yes, I see that for Ottawa as well. Did training on the hill. Such a spiritual swirl there. We must keep our righteous leaders, whether there's any righteous ones in the liberal government, NDP, the bloc, or the conservatives. Must keep them in prayer. They are in a dragon's den. This is imperative for the firewall and the reason that we fast and we pray, though we don't know how. May the groans of the Holy Ghost, as it says in Romans 8, 26, it says, for we don't even know what to pray. The Holy Spirit himself groans through us. We must pray. We must not stop. For your own deliverance, for the deliverance of our children. Freedoms, oh, that's way beyond that. For the nation of Canada to be free. Atlantic Canada. 
all the all, all Atlantic Canada, Labrador, you know, Newfoundland, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, New, uh, all of you. Uh, as you've sown with tears, and I really feel that this is for the watchmen of old and the intercessors of the Canadian firewall day. As you've sown with tears, you shall reap with kingdom joy. There is a breakout and a move of joy coming to Atlantic Canada that people are going to come and watch and see. Your children are coming home. Your wealth is being restored. Your harvest is at the door. Wow. Your intercessors, Atlantic Canada, are key at this time for the nation of Canada. Your air support is needed for my troops, says the Lord. Keep the midnight oil burning. Give my ears no rest for the salvation of the nation, says the Lord. That's a big charge for Atlantic Canada. For the territories for north of 60, God says, to the north, north lands, and to his people, you are mine. And I will not share my glory with another. You must keep the fire going. I hear your cries for my presence. Do not stop. I am and I will answer you, says the Lord. That's for everything north of 60. Thank you, Lisa, and everyone who's on here today. I will close with the scripture. And by the way, Canada, you're not alone. I just met with 12 national leaders an hour ago. We're standing for what's right. We are standing together for you, for the firewall, all of you. It's, I'm so encouraged. I'm so I feel lifted up and protected by all the your prayers for us in our ministry. I feel good and rested, and I am ready to embrace this year on behalf of you, the firewall leaders, Canadians. Pray for us as we go and contend for revival and reformation in the nation. I close with this scripture, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. Paul is talking to Timothy. He says, Timothy, my son, but I'm going to change that word to Canada. I'm going to say it like this because this is the word. This is a scripture verse for us for looking, you know, uh, for this year and looking at what's been spoken over us. Canada, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you. So that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Holding on to faith with a good conscience, which some have rejected and have so shipwrecked their faith in regard to shipwrecked themselves in regard to the faith. I'm going to say it again. My people, my firewall, my intercessors, my children, I'm giving you this command in keeping. Remember the prophecies once made about you and the nation, about you personally and about the kingdom. Recall them that you might fight them. Remember them that you might fight the battle well so that you can hold on to faith with a good conscience. Some have rejected. They've shipwrecked themselves in regard to the faith. 1 Timothy 1.18 and 19. I know there's no 
talk about who's going to be the next prime minister in this word or, ooh, we got our ears tickled. Somewhat generic, what the Lord gave me. But I want to remind you of this. Right now in Canada, we're stuck with the 23rd prime minister. And I believe we're at a tipping point one way or the other. I want to remind those who may not know that in 2017, when I brought Stacey Campbell and the other prophets a word saying there's a darkness coming in the year 2020, I said we had until Canada Day 2020. That's when we started the firewall. I believe that was an answer to the battle for Canada's in repentance. God gave us the grace to come together for the last 132 weeks and establish a family that would be an intercessory engine for revival and reformation in the nation of Canada. Firewall, leaders, directors, watchmen, intercessors, all 2,500 of you that sign in during the week, you're more needed than ever in this hour. We love you. We need you. So with that, happy new year and God bless you guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.